Hi guys, so today we're going to be breaking down the biomechanics of running cadence. Um, first off, before we get into it, let's just quickly define what running cadence is. Running cadence is the number of steps you take each minute, it's the number of times you get a foot contact with the floor. So if you are running at your kind of given speed and you would uh, measure how many times each foot hit the floor in total, so can't even both left and right, and say it was like 160 times your foot hit, uh, one of your feet hits the floor within one minute, then your running cadence at that speed will be 160, okay? If it was 180 times, then running, speed will, uh, running cadence at that speed will be um, 180, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and what we're going to do is break down the difference in terms of um, the biomechanics when we compare a lower running cadence with a higher running cadence, okay? And then we'll see why that's important in uh, by the end of the video. So if we just give you some context, um, a lower cadence will be sort of 150 to 170, okay? That's uh, each time within a minute your foot hits the ground like 150 times, or between 150 and 170. That's what's considered a lower running cadence. If we come to the other side, 170 to 190 is considered a higher running cadence. You sometimes get a little bit higher than that, but for the most part, we can um, catch pretty much everyone in this, in one of these two groups. Okay, and before we get into it, the, um, the lower running cadence is more common in recreational runners, and we'll see that, why that's important in a minute. But most of the running assessments that I do with people, I, I track their cadence and I find that it's between 150 and 170, probably about 80 to 90%. So if you've never worked on your cadence specifically and you've never looked at it and you're not sure what yours is, you're probably sitting in here unless you've done other technique work. Um, if you haven't, then you're probably in this zone. Okay, so what are the biomechanics of the two and how do they differ? Well, there was a research study done in 2014 by Amy Schubert and colleagues and what they did was something called a systematic review. Now, I have written a blog all about what I'm talking about here, which I've linked in the description. And so you can go ahead and check that out afterwards. It also has a link to the original article if you would like to read it. It's a little bit dry, but it is interesting. And what they did, a systematic review, is where they take all the research on a given topic, so all the research studies that have been done about, in this instance, running kids, and they um, look at their results, and then they pull them all together to decide what is the sort of state of play in the research right now? What do we know? based on the research that's available. It's a little bit different to what I've talked about in previous episodes, if you've seen any, um, which is called a meta-analysis. That's when they take a bunch of studies and they actually take their results and stick them into one place and reanalyze them using statistical techniques, okay? In a, in, in a um, systematic review, what they're doing, they're not sort of reanalyzing their statistics and that kind of stuff. What they're doing is reviewing the quality siding on whether their results and their conclusions are valid, and then comparing that with everybody else's, and then coming up with an impression of the overall state of play in the research. So that's what they did, and they were looking specifically at the um, at running cadence and how different running cadences impact running biomechanics. And then we'll talk about why that's important. So what they found, um, at a lower cadence, typically runners were landing with a slightly stiffer knee, a slightly Excuse me, disconnected there for a second. So um, what they found at one at the lower cadence, typically runners were landing with a slightly straighter knee and a slightly stiffer knee and a slightly um, stiffer ankle as well. So if you just put in here stiff and careful knee plus ankle, okay. And what they found here was a uh, less stiff, okay. Same thing, but opposite. Okay, so that's the first thing. We'll come back to that in a minute. What they found, the lower cadence, um, typically runners were overstriding a little bit more. If you saw our Facebook video, uh, Facebook Live last week, we talked all about overstriding. So if you want to check that out, go to our uh, Facebook page and just scroll down a bit. Um, and what they found was that there was more overstriding going on here. Okay, overstriding is when we reach out, as we're running, we're reaching out too far in front of us with our foot and we're landing with the foot quite far ahead of our center of mass. That adds a braking force, an increased braking force that we then have to overcome. Again, I talk about that in more detail in last week's video, 
But if you want to check that out, there's a bit more detail. But basically, it's not a good thing. We're running with the brakes on, essentially. And on this side, reduced overstrain, okay? At this cadence, at the lower cadence, we see increased vertical displacement, okay? And what that is, is, is bouncing up and down too high. Do you know what I mean? The, the, the vertical oscillation, uh, if, if you imagine like seeing a runner and their head is just like moving up and down loads, that's increased vertical displacement, okay? And contrast that on the other side, reduced vertical displacement, okay? Increased here, we're getting interesting, vertical loading rate, okay. Vertical loading rate is how fast we absorb the impact when we land each try. And if, you, if I just illustrate that quickly, if I do this, jump up in the air and land quite softly, I've got a low vertical loading rate. I keep my knees stiff and I land on my heels, now I've got a higher vertical loading rate, okay? It's the impact force, it's how quickly we absorb the force as we land, okay? And down here we have a reduced vertical loading rate. We care a lot about this because a higher vertical loading rate correlates fairly strongly in the research with an increased injury, increased incidence of injury, particularly you know tibial stress fractures and foot injuries and things like that. So higher vertical loading rate, not a good thing. Okay, increased similarly, increased impact forces at the knee and hip, okay? More impact at the knee and hip, which makes sense if the vertical loading rate is high, okay? And on this side, the same thing in reverse, lower impact forces at the knee and hip. And then the last thing, um, increased ground contact time, reduced ground contact time, which is basically what it sounds like. It's how long you're spending on the ground each time you strike the floor. A higher ground contact time, if you imagine running a bit more like this, okay, versus sort of pitter padding side to side, reduced ground contact time. So that, again, a negative effect of a lower cadence and a, um, a more positive effect in terms of biomechanics on the higher cadence side of things. So if we, if we were to take these different biomechanical features and sum them up, actually I, what I didn't talk about is how these two relate. So basically this gives you this and this. So when you land with a stiffer knee and ankle, you don't have soft knees and ankles. You don't absorb the force very well. Your impact goes up, you make more noise, you become more like a thudder kind of a runner, and you have impact, in, uh, increased impact forces at the knee and hip, okay? So again, not, not good stuff. <laughs> if we were to sum it all up visually, okay, I call 150 to 170 the unhappy zone of running kids, okay? And I call 170 to 190 a happy zone of running kids. Okay, that's to sum it up. The biomechanical effects of running at a lower cadence versus running at a higher cadence. And what I would say is if you don't know, uh, you're probably in this one uh, because 8 out of 10 are, but you can check out uh, in the description to this, I've linked the blog where I talk about that um, research study and, and all these biomechanical stuff. But within that blog and within this description, a little bit lower down, I've linked a, a blog I wrote called um, how to use cadence to prevent running injuries, and that talks about how to measure your own cadence and how to work on it if you do want if you do find that you're in the unhappy zone. So that's a couple of resources for you to, to try out um, if you think that you are in the unhappy zone. Okay. Um, well, that's it for today. I hope that was um, helpful and interesting to people. If anyone has any questions, please just let us know in the comments. Hope everyone had a good run today. I was really hot, really, really hot. Like it was army run last week, it was brutal. And then we had 32K this morning. It, that was brutal too, so I'm knackered. So <laughs> um, hopefully my presentation didn't suffer. <laughs> I'll see you all next week. Uh, thanks for tuning in.